Well, hi everyone, this is Bob the Science Guy, and today we're going to finish up my series on Flatsoid's two-hour response to my four-and-a-half-minute experiment challenge. This is going to be the last part of the review, and then I'm just going to do a summation video to talk a little bit about why I did this and what we learned from it. Now, while I mentioned this at the end of my last video, I thought I would mention it at the start of this one, and that is that there's an awful lot of people that are watching these videos that are not subscribed to my channel. I generally get two or 3,000 people that don't follow my channel but do watch my videos. Take a second right now and hit that subscribe button. It doesn't cost you anything, but it helps me get these videos out to a larger audience. Now, another thing that I want to mention before we get started is that I learned a new word today. It's, it's good that you can learn something new every day. That's kind of my motto. As you know, a group of birds is generically called a flock, but some birds have a very specific name when they gather in groups. For example, a flock of crows is called a murder. And normally when you have a panel discussion, you have the host and you have the panelists. When you have a flat earth discussion, you have a host and the panelists, we should give them a special name, a jerkle. So in the future, when we refer to people like Flatsoid and Nathan Oakley that have these panel shows, refer to them as Flatsoid and Nathan Oakley and their jerkles. I think it's an elegant word and it just kind of rolls right off the tongue, don't you think? Well, today what we're going to do is we're going to finish up this review of Flatsoid's response to my video. And we're going to talk a little bit about precision of measurements and margins of error. So let's go ahead and have a listen to Flatsoid. So you get five observations, pick them well. Next, you have got to agree to a reasonable margin of error. Characteristic five of science denial is an inappropriate demand of perfection from science. No Characteristic five of science denial. Where does that come from? That's something new. Has he made this up? To answer your question, Sleeping Warrior, no, I did not make that up. One of my subscribers made up the term jerkle, which I'm going to adopt and promote on my channel. But the five characteristics of science denial come directly from a researcher by the name of Dr. Lee McIntyre who went to the 2018 Flat Earth International Convention and interviewed some of the attendees and some of the leaders of the convention. And he came up with five tropes or characteristics that were very common in people that fell for science denying conspiracy theories. Specifically, they are cherry picking, conspiratorial thinking, promotion of fake experts over real experts, poor scientific and deductive reasoning skills, and number five, an inappropriate expectation of perfection from science, which is what I just cited. So, carry on. Has he made it up? Where does this come from? That has to be made up. It has to be. Science denial. Okay. I would suggest a margin of error of plus or minus 10%, which is very reasonable for an amateur such as myself trying to measure the radius and curvature of the Earth. Okay, I'm going to quickly also say that's actually huge 10%. I'm going to do this again. I'm measuring the Bible. What margin of error should I have? None. Because I'm not oh, calculating. Right. Plus I'm or minus 10% according to bottle. So what is that measurement there, right, flat side? Well, it depends what side. 19.5 centimeters width. And it's 16 centimeters on the dot. Do it again, because we're not, we're not sure. We got to make sure we got to calculate uh, it properly. No, no, no. So sixteen cent sixteen centimeters was that width? Did you say sixteen centimeters width? So on plus the dot. Or minus ten percent. He yeah. said, right? That means we can have fourteen point four on one way and seventeen point six the other way, right? Flatsoid. There are no perfect measurements. Now, you may take a desk ruler out and measure the width of your Bible at 16 centimeters. And I'm pleased to say that Sleeping Warrior's math skills are getting a little bit better because a plus or minus 10% error would be 14.4 to 17.6. However, you have to look at a couple of things. First of all, you're taking a ruler and measuring something that's smaller than the ruler is. That reduces your error. Second of all, this is, a, is an imperial ruler that's marked off in inches. The smallest increment on this ruler is an eighth of an inch. So if I, if I report something out at seven inches on this ruler, it's probably between six and seven eighths and seven and one eighth. I can guarantee that it's going to be in that range. 
but I can't really narrow it down any further because it could be a little before seven or a little after seven. Seven is the closest one that I can actually measure this with. I'm not gonna get a measurement to four decimal places, yet there is a measurement in existence to four decimal places. I can measure your book with a micrometer and I think that you will find that there are dents along the edges that will give you a variation in the width as you go down it. And if you measure it 10 times at the same spot, you're gonna get 10 different readings. They're all going to be extremely close, but you'll get different readings. That's why when we make measurements in science, we make multiple measurements of the same thing. Then we can do a little statistical analysis on it. We can find the mean length of your book. We can find the standard deviation of the different measurements of the width of your book. We can assign confidence levels to a measurement. So for example, I could say that your book is 16 centimeters wide plus or minus two millimeters. And I could say with 95% confidence, and that's a statistical value, is between 15.8 centimeters and 16.2 centimeters. But there's another problem. Why don't you go ahead and take this ruler and measure the length of a soccer field? Are you gonna get 10 matching measurements? No because you're gonna have error as you place this tiny little ruler and measure that large distance. Now imagine measuring the radius of the Earth or the circumference of the Earth or the distance to the moon or the distance to the sun. So with my sextant, I can accurately measure things to two arc minutes. With that accuracy, I was able to get the distance to the sun on my measurement within 2%. That's remarkably good accuracy, but it wasn't the exact value. But as I said, this is characteristic number five of science denial and inappropriate expectation of perfection from science. You see this a lot in flat earth memes where they sit down and say, oh, 1400, they said the distance to the sun was this. And then in 1800, they said it was that. And now they say it's this. So we don't know the distance to the sun. Yeah, we do. What we did was we increased the precision of our measurements. Even in non-scientists, if you look at the trades like you, What's the saying? Measure twice, cut once. Why do you measure twice? Why don't you just cut after the first measurement? It's because the more measurements you have, the closer you get to the truth of the actual length. This is just a concept that apparently is foreign to you and your jerical. Uh, I do science all the time. I never do single measurements on anything. I measure things five, six times, and then I average them and do statistical analysis on them. That's the way you do science. So. Let's go ahead and continue. Yeah, yeah. What, 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 one minute, though. If, if he's got a margin and a error, uh, temps is calculating, he ain't measuring. Yeah, that's yeah, my yeah. point. But that's my whole point. If you're measuring, there is no such thing as margin of error. You, you know what that is? Measuring. That's his wiggle room. Calculations have margin of error. That, that's his wiggle room, so he can, squeeze, he, can, he can squeeze the refraction calculations into it. But that's my whole point. Calculations have margin of errors, not measurements. And we've been saying this for years. They don't know the difference between calculation and measure. Now, I went ahead and put that last little bit in, in case anybody was thinking I was being exceptionally harsh on Flatsoid. That's really what he believes, that measurements don't have margins of error. Calculations do. It's actually kind of the other way around. Math is an exact science. Measurement is inexact. Now I do want to do one more video, just kind of a summary video as to why I did this and what we learned from it. Then the plan is to do the Renaissance and the Age of Enlightenment uh, on the History of the Flat Earth series, and then start going into the 19th century Flat Earth next week. If you would like, please leave a comment and I will look at the discussion between critical think and flatsoid on what constitutes an actual experiment because that was just a barrel of monkeys. Check out the new channel supporter outro. Take care, everyone.